I'm Vince. Hey, you have to start. <laughs> you have to greet everybody. <laughs> what? You have to greet everyone. Hey, everybody. I'm Vince. And I'm Emily. And you're listening to The Lighthouse Lowdown. <laughs> You don't do it often enough, so you get a free pass. Yeah, we're gonna have to cut that. What? Oh yeah, we don't want to hear people to hear mistakes. That's I always let them know that I'm on coffee. I leave them in there all the time. What? Uh, oh, Starbucks. I was gonna say, what am I sipping on? Yeah, no, I, you got hot coffee. It's Starbucks has this thing every weekend in January where you get buy one get one free after noon on the weekends. And so that's what I did. It should be a cool sponsor. So yours was free. Starbucks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I did have some Captain Cecil's um, coffee this week. He was a, a past sponsor of ours. He sent us a, a bag. Yeah. And a bag for a giveaway. And it was it's really good stuff. Mm-hmm. But okay, let's get started. I did not do a history booth today. Oh, and God. Y- it's okay because. Oh, it is? <laughs> it's okay because today is kind of a history buoy uh, <gasps> in total. Is this USLHS? It is. Woo! So I'm excited. Let's get clicking. The United States Aww. Lighthouse Society. That's so cute. What is that? That's an old. So all the images that you see today are, I think all of them, nearly all of them, I could say, okay. are from USLHS.org. Okay. And this is an old signage, like a flag mm-hmm. uh, banner that they had. We'll, we'll go through slides. And I, I may have to go through them on my own pace because I have a lot to to read. But I, I'm reading today, and you're going to hear me reading, and I want to get things right. So that's why I'm reading. Okay. Um, but what what is the U.S. LHS? On screen, you see the United States Lighthouse Society. Yes. That's not all it is. You're going to – we're going to find out. There's okay. several things it is and could be and was – Yes. And is today. So the was is exciting for me because I know it used to be USLHE. That's and right. then it was the Lighthouse Board. And now it's the USLHS. It was ever actually the Lighthouse Board. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. So the oversight, Here. the official description, <laughs> the oversight and administration of lighthouses and other aids to navigation in the United States have fallen under several different government agencies and offices uh, nearly three centuries since the first light tower was built in Boston Harbor. In 1716. Uh So a quick overview of the years and what it was called, the service, the society. Okay. 1716 to 1789, um, the United States Lighthouse Service, Lighthouse Establishment, USLHE, was in the Treasury Department. Mm -hmm. In 1789 to 1903, it was under the Treasury Department, but not, didn't have an official title. It was just part of the Treasury Department was Lighthouses. Oh. 1903 to 1913, the part of the Department of Commerce and Labor. Then the cabinet was split at the time in 1913, the lighthouse system being assigned to the Department of Commerce alone, not labor. 1939 was the U.S. Coast Guard, what became involved. Yeah. So the U.S. Coast Guard, which was then in the Treasury Department, so strange, uh, took control of lighthouses, returning them once again technically to the Treasury Department that they were in okay. before. Yeah. So. Today, the Coast Guard is still responsible for lighthouses, most almost all of them. Yes. Um, and it's still in the agency. Excuse me. Today, the Coast Guard is in the agency of the Department of Homeland Security. Mm. So okay. there's lots of cascades. That's not really the point. But you can see it's gone through. The United States government has had different roles in different organization for, there's not always been one yeah. USLHE. Mm-hmm. So so. Whenever they refer to the Lighthouse Board, was that like a board of directors mm. in the Commerce Department? That, exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna tell you about it. So I have today's the, a brief history, but the caption I came up with: What is the U.S. LHS? Because okay. there's a lot of history. There's a lot of really interesting documentation. There's a lot of stories. There's a lot of changes that have happened, and we're not gonna cover all that today. That's a really in depth okay. conversation. I have another question. Yeah, what's up? And you may answer this later, but I just don't want to forget. Did Whenever the USLHS, uh, USLHE was started, when, like, okay. Mm-hmm. <sighs> They're not the same thing. We were the British. We were British. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We were colonies of Great Britain. Yeah. Yes. So were we a part of, the, with, did they control our lighthouses or were we like a separate, was it they, like a separate government thing? We controlled our own lighthouses. Okay. But we were colonies. So we were so part of the British lighthouse. Yeah. Board. Like 1776 was the signing of the Declaration of Independence, mm-hmm. which was 
screw off Britain. We're yeah. going to be our own thing. And it was shortly after that that the USLHE was no longer a thing. Mm, let me look at that. 1789, you said? 1789 uh, through 1903, they were under the Treasury. So there's kind of, yeah. Okay. The short answer is yes. Um, they were tra- it was traded around. I just don't know if maybe... We had some self-governance, and I think we were already executing, we being people who lived in North America, mm-hmm. were already executing the governance of lighthouses, even if the body name did not change. Okay. So it wasn't managed from Great Britain. <laughs> Great Britain. <laughs> Great Britain. But it was owned. The colonies were owned by Great Britain. Uh-huh. So... It's confusing. We had to fight a war to get free of that. Do you think ours was based, our lighthouse system was based off of Britain's lighthouse mm-hmm. system? Okay. I think so. And I think uh, historically Britain's been known for having like the world's, historically, the, the world's best Navy. Mm. Uh, and part of that probably includes lighthouse management and interesting and that system. I didn't know that. I, I don't, I didn't do that research for today, but okay. that's really interesting. That's a good future question. So, the two sets of letters that are most common you'll see are USLHE and USLHS. And we've seen them on bells and clocks Ocracoke. and Ocracoke, different yeah. different things, different places. Um, they're every Everyone who's a historian of lighthouses knows these terms, but mm-hmm. they're not interchangeable. Um, they're not the same thing. Yeah. So USLHE is the United States Lighthouse Establishment. So here's my, I just put a, a picture from the website to look at something, but USLH. Board, society, establishment, and service are all different things. Um, The USLHE was the first official name of the American Lighthouse Agency. Uh, It was in the Ninth Act of Congress in 1789, that year we talked about, Mm -hmm. that took the 12 existing lighthouses in what would become the United States and um, various colonies, federal government was to control of them, an act to establish and support of lighthouses. So that's the Ninth Act of the new Congress. Oh, cool. A letter from the Federal Commissioner of Revenue in 1795 uses the language. It appears that March 1790, the late Secretary of the Treasury, so on, so on, so on, lighthouse establishment was received from Georgia. So he's saying, hey, something is going on, and he called it the lighthouse establishment. So that's one of our earliest records of okay. USLAG. So uh, I assume that that was carried over from prior Great Britain management. Yeah, okay. That was until 1910. We already talked about the change of. Sorry, I'm, this is an article I'm I'm citing here, but uh, the board, United States Lighthouse Board, mm-hmm. is for for a long time it was one guy, Stephen Pleasanton. He was the he- singular head of the lighthouse system. His title was the fifth auditor of the treasury. So cool. He was the care and superintendent of lighthouse establishment under the secretary of treasury. General and superintendent of lights was another one of the titles. Pretty cool thing to write down. Yeah. Um, but as things got more complex and the system got more challenging, and he more needed more lighthouses, more mm-hmm. light he, ships. He was kind of <laughs> called out. So oh. he was replaced and retired from that position in eighteen fifty two. That year, single administrator him was replaced by the board of eight military engineers, distinguished scientists of the day, under the direction of the sec- secretary of the treasury who was the ninth member of the Lighthouse Board. So they had nine people. Okay. Secretary of the Treasury was one of them. Mm-hmm. Pleasanton, Mr. Pleasanton, was taken out of that position, uh, which he was probably relieved to do, it sounds like. Yeah. And these were military-focused people, uh, but who were a board now in charge of all the happenings. Mm. So the board that I know I discussed it in one of our, our previous uh, art, um, episodes. episodes, my God. <laughs> Uh, I showed an image of the early board was those nine gentlemen. Okay. So military and engineers. Cool. So they didn't replace the lighthouse establishment, but they were the board of directors of the establishment. Mm -hmm. So that's why the lighthouse board are the people who made the decisions. The lighthouse establishment was the body that they were a part of. So uh, this is not what the whole episode is about, but I wanted to to do some of these. So the board is a part of it. The society is not the same thing as the service, U-H-L-H, U-S-L-H-S. Society is what we have today, and we're going to talk about okay. how that came to be, and, yeah. and there are great resources for lighthouses today. The establishment was the governing body. The service was the governing body after the military took over. Oh, which, after Coast Guard? Yeah, so the, the lighthouse service came from 1939. U.S. Coast Guard took over. 
and I think that be, oh. it's called the servant. They they used it interchangeably though. Like I have a letter from before that time, 1902. It says, "Quote: No person employed in or in any way connected with the lighthouse service will be permitted to supply provisions or rations for officers or crews of lighthouse vessels or any lighthouse establishment vessel or any vessel employed in the." lighthouse service charter or otherwise that's one sentence oh my god says both of them so the the point is it is a service it was called the establishment but the sir i think it's like military service we think yeah. of well and even like, like i know that the lighthouse establishment vessels were still called establishment vessels mm-hmm. because they were from that time period when it was under the united states lighthouse establishment yeah. so they were they cared still carried the name of the establishment even when they were being used in a different time period. Yeah. So the the boil down at the end of the article, the summary, if one chooses to be officially correct, they should use the term establishment, referring to the system from 1789 until the creation of the Bureau of Lighthouses, which is another thing, the Bureau, mm. in 1910. I be, is that a short period? Mm-hmm. Okay. It, I vaguely feel yeah. like I've I've read or, you know, yeah. read off something from a bureau and I didn't. Yeah. The Bureau, and they call it, quote, the Bureau. For a while in letters and, and mm-hmm. documents from 1910 to 39 <laughs> then 39 was u.s coast guard so it's establishment bureau service the u.s lhs that we so often talk about today with the passport program mm-hmm. with all the information on lighthouses with the great website um, uslhs.org is not the service it is the society united states lighthouse society it is different it is a different body is it like and informational? I didn't know this for two years. Is it informational and not? It's not a governing in charge. A governing body. The governing body actually oh, in charge is the Coast Guard. That makes sense. It's totally different. Well, and I didn't. Book. We've been doing this for two years. Yeah. Well, I, I never really considered it. Like, because <laughs> in my head, the Coast Guard, that yeah, they they own the light, like the actual like um, beacons now. Yeah. And so, I forget that that means the USLHS is more. It's informational. It's yeah. not. Like it actually yeah, governing. Yeah. So, so the U.S. LHS is really what I want to put the attention on today. The the society, what? But the U.S. LHS, okay, yeah. So, the, the but service. they they have all of the, all the data info. from the establishment. They do. Okay, I'm gonna tell you how that came to be. Excellent. So I'm very excited. I, I have a, a a history buoy coming up next oh. episode that has to do with the U.S. LHS, and so I'm excited to see if you cover what I was gonna cover. Mm. If you I, do, I'm, I'm I'll, I'll choose that something. Else. I know. <laughs> I, I'm quoting again. the 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 saying is something like, "The USLHS, the society, mm-hmm. didn't have a founder that founded it, but rather the society found the founder." So it it was a, a gentleman who wasn't looking to start something, but instead found himself in the position. So oh. his name is Wheeler Wayne. Your boy <laughs> Wayne. So, okay, I'm sorry. No. So, founded officially in 1984. So, many years later. Yeah. Is the society. Uh, it's the nation's premier lighthouse organization, found its president right on the other way around. It started with some routine lighthouse experience of a young Coast Guard lieutenant, Wayne. So, he was on duty oh, as a lieutenant. Cool. Uh, but it really blossomed when he instead became a civilian Coast Guard employee and uh, later an uh, assistant to the aides the chief assistant to the AIDS and navigation branch of Northern California. So I'm going to stop reading, but my memory tells me from reading this article, it's more interesting to talk. Yeah. He was in this position working for the coast guard. And then he was in another position, this aid to navigation. And they had all of the data, all the books were around him on lighthouses, on flash patterns, on day marks, mm-hmm. on ship navigation, on history, on, Keeper's logs. He had all those physical copies in this for the West Coast in this office he was working in. Mm-hmm. And so that's where it starts, quote, the longtime society president recalls. So he had a report, uh, 1910 on bulletins, engineering books, instruction manuals, even medical practice for lighthouse service. 1981, he got a call from the National Park Service mm-hmm. seeking information about the monument oh. uh, related to lighthouses. Yeah. He contacted Wheeler and said, quote, I understand you're a lighthouse expert. Wheeler took it home to his wife, Sally, and said, this guy thinks I'm an expert. Isn't that funny? (laughs) So it went on to be what it is. So today on the website, if you open their website, the mission statement 
So what, what do they do? Preserve and share the history and legacy of America's lighthouses and their keepers. And the vision statement, I think it's funny, they both, is to be a beacon to the American lighthouse community, providing steadfast guidance and resources on heritage, education, preservation, all things lighthouses. So they're the, the modern day textbook, the modern yeah. tour, the modern website to find information on lighthouses in the United States. It's like a, col- a collection of all lighthouse yeah. knowledge. I thought this image was super cool. It's from Paris Exposition 1900. So they were talking oh. about Fresnel lenses, the different types and sizes. That and were this available. was still relevant. Like it was like a sales yeah. pitch. Like here's all of your uses. You should get a Fresnel lens. Yeah. Like a World's Fair type of thing. I want to go to this. Look at that. Can there be something like this now? Can I wear that hat? Yeah. You probably could, has mercury in it. But is it bo- a bowler hat? I think so. <laughs> it probably has mercury. <laughs> Wayne, what? Uh, Wayne Wheeler um, said that he put together a slideshow presentation for a middle school. And then he was asked to present at a yacht club, someone who saw that, oh. some parent. And then after that, the phone just rang off the hook. Oh, Lots more talks so followed cool. for Wheeler. Uh, about 1982, he came early. He came home and said, boy, there's a lot of lighthouse enthusiasts out there. They ought to get organized. <laughs> Bingo, sort of. It was going to be, it was supposed to be called the California Lighthouse Society. Uh, and he had a talk with a friend who said, stop thinking so small, think yeah. U.S. Um, so he retired from his position to become the guy. He was the guy. He, he had the books. And back in the 80s when books were all we had, um, he was answering the phone calls and giving the presentations. He was, he was the guy. So, so cool. Really cool. So he gave us what we have today. And what we have today with the society is so closely tied in culture. And they give so much, cause it, and they should, so much credit to the service, mm-hmm. to the establishment, that us included mix them up. Yeah. So talked about the strategy, but um, they have two things they're going after. Uh, expand and enhance our services and value to the entire American Lighthouse Society community and help the community to grow by bold, sharing our knowledge, resources, and passions, which is what they do Mm -hmm. perfectly. And then two, um, it talks about them operating excellently, which I I think makes sense for an um, ex-retired coastman, Coast Guard guy, was talking about to do a really good job. If you don't do a really good job with your information, with your presentation, with everything that has your stamp on it, then he's saying that they're not going to retain the loyalty and, and what they value will go away. Yeah. So I respect that a lot. I think they're living up to it today. And we're going to show slides on all of these, but if you go to their website and that's what I'm going to surf around, they're published in magazines. They have over the history of, of the society, they have several volunteers that have been really key to what they're doing. Um, early on they had a photography competition <gasps> so you could submit like Pictures a picture of, of a lighthouse yeah. and it became what I would say now is like really common lighthouse photography and art it's yeah. in the United States but it helped to promote like people usually know about a lighthouse uh, at least locally but then you see a different one and a different style and a short one and a tall one mm-hmm. a different day mark so it kind of spread the interest in what was going on um, it's a nonprofit organization since the founding in 1984. They do lighthouse tours. They organize and execute them. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a lot of um, lighthouse, uh, what's it called? Oh, no. I had it and then it went away. Um, trips. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, tours like, um, <sighs> what, vacations? Yeah. They organize cruises. and. Yeah. They, they have um, one for Alaska coming up. Uh, Anchorage, I saw that. Yeah, or catch a can. Maybe. One in Germany, I can't remember. There's one international one that's going on. They have some in. They did some in like Iceland and stuff. Mm. So it's not just the U.S. They do some, some out of out of U.S. Yeah. too. They have good relationships. They have uh, Lighthouse Digest. Yeah, so this is their the Keepers Lighthouse Digest. It comes with one of the memberships. No, that's uh, the Keepers Log. The Keepers Log is a separate thing. I didn't know there was another magazine. Yeah. And as of, I think yesterday, I am now a member of the US LHS as uh, well. Joined the club, I, I see. I thought it was about time. <laughs> Can I have your patches? No. 
can't have my patches. But the Lighthouse Digest shows some of their artwork and some of their articles that are organized. Did you get? Did you, did you become a part of this magazine club? So I'm going to look at membership on the website. Join or renew. Okay, well, don't go too deep into it. <laughs> I am a keeper membership. Okay. Which is, we're going to, I can, I can show my screen, but I'm going to, I'm going to finish the presentation first. Okay. Don't, so don't go to, don't go to the membership levels. Yes. Okay. Don't we don't go have to. to. I'm going to, I am going <laughs> to go through the passport. Is that okay? Yes. That's okay. good. Uh, that was another one I was going to do, but it's not the next one. So the, the passport system. It's the, genius. Yep. It is a genius idea. Cause it's, people like me who, I think I've said this before, but like if I play a video game, I'm one of those people that just wants to collect everything <laughs> there is to collect in the game. Go everywhere there is to go. Yes. It's made for people like me who just like a, a lot, like from now on for of all time, our lighthouse related trips will be based on which lighthouses have stamps. <laughs> I still have zero stamps. I can't believe you have zero stamps. I haven't so climbed lame. a lighthouse and I have zero stamps. So lame. Lame. <laughs> it is lame. <laughs> So the, the passport program was started in 1994, which is crazy to me. 84? 94. Oh, okay. So one, one year short okay. of 95, which is a great year <laughs> <laughs> when I was born. Me, Patrick Mahomes, and Post Malone, so oh uh, and many other wonderful people. United States Lighthouse Program. Uh, so you, you track your visits, for those who don't know. So you get this passport that looks like a U.S. official passport. Yeah. Um, and... It has pages that have really cool artwork, but you stamp, you collect stamps by going to lighthouses or proving you're at the lighthouse with a photo. Yes. And then the, 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 the lighthouse keepers is the lack of words. The people who manage that lighthouse, like Alcatraz Island is mm-hmm. managed for the National Park Service. They will have applied paid for and then gotten a stamp that's custom designed by the USLHS. They, cool. they, they, they pay the fee. So the hope is that you as a visitor go and you donate at least a dollar. You get, give them something mm-hmm. to promote their lighthouse. Thank you so much. They in turn give you a stamp yeah. in your passport. You collect stamps. You fill the passport. Is it 60? Does that sound right? 60 <sighs> stamps fill a passport? Well, we're about to find out. Another thing is um, every year that they do. Sorry if I'm stepping on your no, toes. Right. Every year that they do this passport, there are new stamps that get added sometimes like a lot of lighthouses in new york have several different stamps you can get depending on where you go to get the stamp or some places will have two stamps so you can ask for both um and they also lose a lot of stamps every year like this is no longer participating this has changed designs like stuff like that and uh they send a notice every year um, about new stamps that are being added and they also said this year that a lot of people, like volunteers or employees at lighthouses and also the places like the museums where, because mm-hmm. like a lot of lighthouses you go to, you can't get the stamp at the lighthouse. You have to go right. somewhere else to get the stamp and people won't know about the stamp program because it's kind of obscure. Like it's not, people that go there aren't. It's a subculture. It's, yeah, it's like, it's a deeper Thing that a lot of people aren't yeah. a part of. So then some people would message the USLHS and be like, hey, I showed up and you said there was going to be a stamp here and they had no idea what I was talking about. And in those cases, you have to do it by mail because it's just that this person that you talked to didn't know that there was a stamp program. Mm-hmm. So you kind of have to ask around. It's just like, oh, it made me realize like I may have to. Yeah, it, it's not super well known. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it is super well known in the right community. And the folks who are listening probably yeah. know. But um, yeah, if you go to, I think one of the examples is like Cape Disappointment Lighthouse. Mm-hmm. There's no facility there for visitors. There is a Cape Disappointment State Park, which is just across the bay, which is where North Head Lighthouse is at. Mm-hmm. And that is where you would go and talk oh, to the, Like you get, you get stamps stamp. for probably both, right? But yeah. it's funny. It's not actually at the lighthouse. Mm-hmm. So That's true for a lot, where, a lot of lighthouses. What was our first one? It wasn't Ocracoke. Um, Body. Yeah, Body Island. So they had, uh, in uh, Outer Banks, <clears throat> they had a building which was a store slash history museum. Yeah, the old Keeper's Cottage. And, uh, yes, which is often what's done with the Keeper's Cottages, which is great. Mm-hmm. And also they have um, someone there, I'm sure, with a stamp 
yeah. that, that knows people are going to come and ask me for a stamp, especially on the Outer Banks, which yeah. are covered in lighthouses. Right. So um, w- when you fill your stamp, when you fill your passport, you get a patch. So these are some of the patches. So I personally think the first one you get is the coolest one. Um, and then the prestige that comes with more, obviously, is really neat. But I just like the design so much of the first one, which makes me happy. Yeah. But you fill it out, your entire book and you can have stamps from lighthouses that are not official you can have stickers or other things i would encourage you to go read on the website right but <clears throat> excuse me but once you prove to the us lhs that you've got your first passport filled out they'll send you this stamp in or this uh patch in the mail i have seen the light and it's the all white one and it then is 60 yeah 60 light 60 so 60 is a complete passport book and if you go further and you continue, and apparently people are doing this. The, ch- the website has their list, their names listed. Yes, who's in what club? It, yeah, and if you th- someone just hit the three hundred lighthouses club, and they shouted them out in the email that they oh nice like updated stuff. So I mean 300. 300. Crazy. So now a lot of people are getting these. You know, if you go down the outer banks, you're going to see what five or six. Mm-hmm. And then if you go on a cruise, especially one organized by the US LHS, yeah, they they will have like potentially 12, you know, that boom, you get them. So I think that's how people, these retirees, man, they have the life. Yes. Are seeing so many lighthouses. I'm so jealous. So you can see the light. uh, And then if you turn in two, you get the silver star level, 120 lighthouses. So it's a new patch. Yeah. And so on. Three, four. And then once you get to 300, which is five books, they get you this little wing is what they call it. And then six books, a second wing, seven books, a third wing. So, so what it looks like is like when you're platinum, 240 lighthouses, they're all circular patches. Mm-hmm. And then when you hit it's 300, bigger. it becomes like a strip. Each uh, n- another 60 lighthouses after 300, then you get a com- to complete a circle around your existing platinum circle. And then patch. <gasps> there's another. There's more. Oh, my gosh. There's the diamond circle, which is a whole new patch. Orange border, which really stands out from yeah. the other ones. And so it has a diamond background. New color scheme. 480 lighthouses. It's kind of gaudy. I'm into it. <laughs> and then you get three <laughs> more wings as you go on. So the top of the line is 660 lighthouses. Um, and I God. think I, can, I should know this and I we can read it in a second. I think there's one more. Oh, it's, um, it's a flag. The Pharaoh. Uh, Isn't it a flag? Wait, I'll tell you about the flag in a second. Oh, okay. It's here. Let's check the next slide. That's the, we'll talk about the flag. Okay. But it's like, uh, what's the original first lighthouse ever made? The Pharaoh. Over oh, f- in, um, Alexandria. Yeah. So we'll look. Well, I'll, I'll look at their website. Well, I'll bring it on screen. We'll surf. But the flag comes from filling out a passport book with 100% stamps. So no stickers, no images that proved you were somewhere, but the actual stamps themselves. You get a fully stamp only award. Uh, which is that flag. I thought it was, oh, I didn't know that was a thing. For some reason, I thought the flag was for if it was only lighthouses because there's a lot of stamps you can get that aren't lighthouses. They're like Coast Guard Museum or um, a light ship or we'll, something. We'll review. Okay. Because you might be right. You, yeah, I just, I haven't looked at it. So uh, I wanted to show this again. We've already covered it, but okay. sharing their knowledge, resources, and passions. So uh, I'm going to go surf the website with on screen. We're going to talk nice. about it. Because I couldn't fit it all on slides. Right. Um, but something else they've podcast. got. They've got their own podcast, which is uh, Jeremy D'Etremont is the, the host. And it's a really good podcast if you're looking for another one. Yeah. And it's it's the official podcast of the USLHS. Um, Lighthearted is mm-hmm. the name. So there's images on screen, but it's also found on the website. Um, and it's, it's a lot more in depth than ours because ours are like theirs is really nice because they always have a special guest and so it'll be someone who works with a specific Mm -hmm. lighthouse or someone who's an expert in like something specific and they also do current events like anytime something new happens in the lighthouse world they'll cover it and so it's like deep deeper than ours where we just talk about like history of certain lighthouses which i really i think i'm glad that that ours is like different in some way because Um, you can listen to both and have very different 
Yeah, when very I, different information. When I tell people that I meet about our podcast, I have to mention Lighthearted, and it's it's because that's the it's the news of light lighthouses. It's the like you said, current, ongoing, deep conversations. Ours, we have a lot of fun, um, and we try to be a little lighter than light, yeah. lighthearted, but <laughs> we're appealing to a different crowd. Um, I I think it's good. I think there's room for both, and I, I think there's special things that only uh, Jeremy can cover with mm. his extensive work. Jeremy so, de Etremont. This is the website, and there's I can go to the main main one, but I wanted to show you. That's all I'm going to say about it. I am the keeper level, so I will get this patch in the mail. And I'm Beacon. Whoa, <laughs> you're really investing. <laughs> so. I use their website so much that maybe I should help them out yeah but i'll let you cover more details in a future episode on the memberships so cool i love that patch so you can also gift memberships if you're so inclined Mm -hmm. uh but let's just kind of surf for a minute kind of talk about some of the things we've already seen yeah and like i mentioned in a sorry like i mentioned in a past episode they recently redid their website and it it's really a big improvement yeah so something else i'm jumping on my own notes here but they really did a good job with social media in the internet. Mm-hmm. I think they said it was like early 2000s, like 03 is when they were on online and, and updating the website, which I mean, what YouTube came out in 2005, I think it was launched. Oh wow. Facebook was around what? Oh seven. I don't know. But the, the point is they were a breaking bleeding edge and they've worked several times and recently to update both their, uh, internet presence as well as social media mm-hmm. so they're putting in a lot of work here we see the the keepers log so uh, that's included that's that's what i got keeper level so the keepers log is different from the uh magazines that i showed okay magazines are a separate thing that we can i did see a, a, a sign on here lighthearted podcast it's new yeah i'm, I'm gonna talk about tours. their tours. accommodations and their tours yeah that's what i was thinking of like you said tours, and for some reason I thought it was a different word. But Yeah, t- this one's full. 2024 Caribbean cruise, 15 lighthouses, 9 days. Solar, that's a pretty lighthouse. Solar eclipse, Lake Erie, Denmark and Germany. Germany, yeah, that's so nice. cool. Rhode Island, Connecticut, Northern California, you know that Maine. One. Lots of cool things. These groups look like fun. Oh, they look like that. They look <laughs> so like you'd meet people and have a good time. Yeah. So they do several things. First off, I'm going to mention at the end again, you can donate on the website or via mail if you so choose. Uh, And that's how the best way to support them is probably membership and then donations, but they do endowments. So they have like scholarship type programs and they also have grant programs. So if you have a lighthouse project you want to work on, Mm -hmm. there's a, you should read the website, but there's a submission process to say, here's what I want to do. Here's images and background and and here's what we plan to do. And they, they do that every year. They try to give out two to three, um, projects that they help fund. Yeah. They, That's really cool. They listed that in that um, email I was talking about as well. I think it's just like at the beginning of the year, they say what their plans are and like, like the people who got 300 lighthouses, like they, yeah. so they, they say all the changes. And then at the bottom, they said which projects they were funding for which lighthouses. So that's all on there too. Should have, should have forwarded you the email if I had known it. Yeah. It's cool. They do a lot of cool <laughs> stuff. I'm really it's blown cool. away by, by what they do. I know it's so much. The passport is, I don't know, I just, I love the passport. The passport's so cool. So we're on the passport page now, and we I just scrolled past all the levels that we talked about. 11 then, passports, 660 yeah. lighthouses and 11 passports. Yep, that's the Pharos <gasps> of Alexandria. So I was kind of close, Pharos. Uh, the we, Hall we of Fame. We have the two pieces. We they have, have a web page that shows who's made that accomplishment. There's 900 locations with at least one stamp. You weaklings with zero stamps. In addition, (laughs) many stamps have been redesigned. The tours provide hundreds of more stamps and lots of locations have multiple stamps. Okay. And And you're right. You're right. It says um, if a passport contains only stamps, collector receives a stamp only flag for each one in excess of 11. Yeah. What does that mean? I don't know. Stamps? Only official stamps. When this type of passport is verified, the program member will not only receive the badge, but also commemorative custom patch. Oh, okay. So even if I were to turn in the yeah. first, like with only 60, li- only 60 lighthouses, if there were only official stamps, then it would be a stamp only award. Does right. that, does that mean you can't, um, you probably won't know this, but if, 
There's some you unofficial mail, ways to park your way. If you mail in stamps, it Don't, won't count. Do not mail them in. They've asked specifically on here, do oh, not no, mail no. them. Oh, no, no. No, no. If you get stamps in the mail, that mm-hmm. won't count as stamp only? Or do you think it will? I don't. I don't know how you get stamps in the mail. I, I know what you're saying. Yeah. I, I think it's a sticker maybe. And maybe it's an no. official. So because. They send you a rubber thing to stamp your no, own no. passport. They stamp it on a piece of paper. You cut it out. Oh, and I put think that would in. count. Okay. That would count. Yeah. Because it's like I was there. Before. Yeah, yeah. Because when we went to the Outer Banks, I found out about the passport thing afterwards. Devastating. Right. It was right afterwards. So I f- figured out where to get the stamps from. But you have to mail in. A um, what's it called? A picture. You have to yeah, mail in proof yeah. that you were there. Two dollars, and a uh, envelope that's already stamped. What is it called? Self addressed. Like return to sender. Something envelope. Yeah, yeah. It, you have to send that Pre-paid, in too. So yeah. I haven't gotten gotten around to doing that, but. So yeah, and and you if you want to, you don't have to join as a a member. Emily can talk about memberships in the future, but you can just get a passport if you want. You don't have to be a member of the USLHS. Uh, And then there's also a passport level, which I think is the entry level. Yeah. So you get some other perks if you sign up. Mm -hmm. And any, any membership you do sign up for, you also get the passport membership. Yep. Yeah, that's true. It's all encompassing. But you have to buy the passport book separately. Yep. So So here, here's the, the keeper's log. If you get the keeper level, it kind of keeps you up. It's modern news and articles. Um, and then I I have on my notes resources because there's so many. I know. There's so many and they're so good. And you know this because you're looking at them. But Lighthouse Technology is going to be its own like history movie collection Ooh, of stuff. Oh, yeah. Light lists is really interesting. Obviously, you know what and, and day marks are on mm-hmm. here. Foghorns are on here and they're audio recordings. So you can go listen to a foghorn. From oh, cool. like 1930 something. Oh, there's so many. Okay, I exaggerated. 1970 is the oldest that's listed here. Okay. But I've listened to some of these. And something, when I listen to these, I won't play them now. Um, we can play them off, off air. But they play and then they run out of air. And so it's like, whoa. Like, oh. it, like it jumps an <laughs> octave. Like I used to play trumpet. Yeah. And if you, you know, you, you can play multiple octaves of the same note based on airflow and pressure. So I was like, of course, a foghorn would work that way too. But it's not a sound that I had heard before. It's not the, the ing, but it's off. Yeah. It was um, kind of a flutter at the end, which I yeah. thought was cool. So the bellows or the, the compressor or whatever runs out of capacity until mm-hmm. it has to recharge. Thought that was cool. But that's cool. on here. Um, you can, I mean, there's information, there's children's stuff. In memoriam is insane have you seen this page no so this oh. shows all the lighthouse personnel that have died oh and this would actually be really helpful drowned electric shock fell, fell off, off lighthouse cliff. fell off cliff oh, died no. from coal stove fumes killed in hurricane killed in tsunami drowned 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 there's so many drowned black keeper killed in indian attack 1836 oh i assume they noted that because he was black he was killed i don't know but oh. like drowned boat killed in explosion. tsunami Buoy gas, gas explosion. <laughs> now, I am not using these people's deaths. Hit in head by Derek? Hear me out. I am not using these people's deaths as entertainment. I'm sorry. But there is a lot. This, I mean, this is history. These are real people. Yes. There's a lot of really interesting demises. And this goes. Including it, murder. Yeah. And this goes along with what I was saying. I don't know if it was the last episode uh, with Split Rock. Mm-hmm. But a lot. Uh, there's a lot of deaths, and it's, uh, you can see them here, especially by drowning. Drowning. Fell. It's especially assistant keepers as well. They are always the ones that are in the boats Together. going somewhere for supplies or something and then yeah. have it capsize. There's one. So murdered is on here. Mm. There's several, actually. Shot. Suicide, accidentally shot. Accidentally shot. Suicide. Sad. They're all sad. but Then there's uh, shot and killed by assistant keeper. Painting tower. Then there's one. I won't waste all day on this, but there's one. We could. There's one where it's like five people in a row, and it's like uh, light ship sank, and it's all the same date. Oh, like, oh awful! Damn it! Like, so this is God. not. It's not. I'm not poking fun at these people who passed away, but it's really interesting, and it's it's they update this anytime 
it's submitted. So and this doesn't really cool. include um, natural, no, by natural causes. These are like these on are all duty. like accident yeah. stuff. So shoot, the the resources is probably the highlight of the website, and it's yeah. really so in depth. Lots, so much information, and that's kind of their whole purpose is right spreading the knowledge, spreading information. The travel page we already clicked on, um, but there's something else I want to show you. Accommodations. Oh yeah. Can I stay at the lighthouse? You sure can. There's two of them that the USLHS has done restorations on. They're both near Seattle. Seattle. Mm -hmm. On our Ooh. Pacific Northern Loop. Look at the images. Point No Point and Point Wilson. So there's they're towards Dungeon S. Remember mm -hmm. that, that yeah. up there. So they're different places. But Mount Rainier, I think, is what's shown in the background here. They're just so beautiful. This one I think is two fifty a night, minimum two nights, Not and three fifty a night, minimum two nights. Not nearly as bad as the ones I was looking at in Cape Cod. And they're cool. My gosh. So that these are actually USLHS. And point no point is actually where the headquarters is at now oh. for the USLHS. Can you go? Yeah. But half of the keeper's house is the headquarters. The other half is the inn that you stay in. There's a it's a divided what? duplex. Yeah. I didn't know headquarters. Wow. Yeah. I'll uh I'll click on it. So you see it's a duplex. There's actual actually um Images. There's a walkthrough video on here of what it looks like. Really cool. They did a good job. And as our listeners know, there's several places you can stay in lighthouses, but it's cool that these are USLHS. Yeah. Um, Official. You can shop. There's clothing and stuff. I thought we should do maybe a, a giveaway in the early future of maybe a hat from them oh, or a bit. shirt or maybe a membership. My, on my Christmas list last year was a USLHS hat. And it's discontinued. Oh, no. And I didn't get it for Christmas. It was actually crippling. <laughs> oh, no. It was called, it was the, the putty color is what it was. And it was like a soft hat instead of like a firm. <sighs> Damn. Yeah, I think they had a so soft sad. I thought they had a soft hat. Yeah, it was kind of like that, yeah. the, the ball cap, but it was, it was something else. More wait, feminine style. Wait, wait, click on it. There oh, is. they still have it. Okay, when I went on here, it was not there. I might as well just buy it. If it's I'm going to be so devastated by it. It's 25 <laughs> bucks. It includes shipping and handling. Can you add to cart? <laughs> Added to cart. So we Thank may you. we may do a giveaway in the in the future with some of their swag because we really appreciate what they yeah, do. Yeah, they're simple and it's nice because you're supporting, supporting the society. Yeah. So I'm going to minimize and go back to my slides. And I just bought a book from them about main lighthouses. And uh, it's really nice because if you buy it off Amazon, it's a lot more expensive than it is on this website, mm. which is normally not how it goes. Yep. Amazon marking it up. Those turds. Bezos, you <laughs> listener. Wouldn't that be so fun? Unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, how about a sponsorship? Oh All right. My God. So, <laughs> We'd be living the dream. So um, how they preserve the history of lighthouses in the United States. Better, more effectively, more intensely, more widespread than anyone else, any other body that I'm aware of. Um, so this is some of their, their current need. There's 334 submissions they received recently on lighthouses that need oh, help man. funding. Um, 500 plus logbooks to be digitized, which is, you know, hours. Yes. And hours. Um, 800,000 lighthouse related images to be scanned. Think of all the cool pictures out there. And... So when you do send in your lighthouse related, especially like if you have pictures of like if your great grandpa was a lighthouse keeper mm -hmm. and you have pictures of him, um, they they put underneath the photo who sent it in, like or oh, who cool. who provided the photo to the lighthouse society, and then they also put who of the employees scanned it into the database. It's like a whole. It's, they have interns who do that, I believe. Yeah. So they still have volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. They st so they started out with Wayne. I think his wife helped a little bit. And then they had one full-time employee after like there's three or four volunteers, mm -hmm. including Wayne. Yeah. And I think it was a secretary. And it's like, we have an employee. Oh. Then they moved. So it was from his house. They moved to an office space at that time. And then the office space, I want to say they moved again. And then now, point no point, is their official oh. place. Pretty sure Wayne's retired. There's a board. It shows the board on the website. I, okay. didn't, I didn't check it out. I probably should have. But oh, that's right. So the point is that there's a need. And even if it's only a couple dollars or if it's a passport book or something, mm -hmm. check the website out. Um, 
I really do think this is the best place to go, probably in the world for lighthouse information. Yeah. At least from our perspective, anytime we do foreign lighthouses, it's so Hard. much harder to find the information because the US LHS is so good. Mm-hmm. The website's so good. And, and Lighthouse, Lighthouse Friends. Friends, which I'm sure uses the same basis yeah. of information. They, they do. do a great job. And Lighthearted Podcast, the whole community uh, is, is really great. And I think I read that the people who did Lighthouse Friends, I, I, I looked into it one time, um, and they went to the lighthouses and then wrote. So like it, it wasn't all based on internet research. Mm. It was like they did in-depth hard work. Cool. I'll have to look at that again, but... It's funny. I've seen some because I usually cite multiple sources just to make sure. And sometimes there's no um, Lighthouse Friends article. Mm-hmm. And so uh, sometimes there's contradictions and it's like, what? It is. What happened yeah, in it's history hard. or how was it interpreted when someone read the log book? Mm-hmm. So it's really interesting. This is the donation page uh, on their nice. site. Ten dollars is what they automatically ask for. And then if you want to, you can put it. I like that you can earmark it. Point Wilson Lighthouse. That was that beautiful image we saw. Mm-hmm. Um, you can specify where you want your money to go. Yeah, is that California, what that is? You can, yep. Okay. Unrestricted, or you can specify. Uh, and if you want to make your donation with a check, some people like to do that. U.S. Lighthouse Society, 9005 Point No Point Road, Northeast Hansville, Hansville, Washington, 98340. They have questions. They have a phone call. You can Or a phone number you can call. They've got a... An email. So they, they, they do a great job. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is point no point. So that's so the, pretty. the lighthouse that's next to the headquarters. It's a really pretty area. Uh, there, there's this one step back. You can see the keeper's quarters, which is duplex. Looks in great shape. Yeah, it's a duplex. Uh, and then that one, I just forgot the name. Wilson. Point Wilson, I believe, is this one. Red and red. it's, you know. It's pink, covered in birds. Pink sky. But it is so pretty. Yeah, birds are hanging out. It's right on the water as well. As per usual. As per usual. USLHS, the USLHE, the establishment, the service, the the whole thing tied up. I wanted to kind of clarify today and then talk about the society. So USLHE has its own long history. Yeah. And even from 1934 and on is the military, the Coast Guard, I should say, mm-hmm. history. Um, would be really interesting to dive into. So we might do that in the future. But for now, um, thank you to the society and a quick coverage. Yes, thank you. So, so much fun. Do you have any other questions no. or things you wanted to point out? That's it. I kind of just put it in every time I had something. That's what we do here. <laughs> I'm usually not that way, but I will be for lighthouses. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, check us out on YouTube. Check us out on LinkedIn. We're very near 300 followers. Woo! You could be the 300th. Yeah, we're close on um, Instagram as well. So yeah, How's Instagram doing? I haven't been on there. It's pretty good. We're, we're actually having some good growth. And and there's been lots of people leaving reviews on our um, on uh, Apple and on our website. Oh, and great. And we've been getting voicemails and emails from people. Oh my gosh, we've got to catch up. It's so much fun. Well, if you've listened this far, <laughs> you're one of the MVPs, and we thank you very yeah, much. we love you guys. So... We'll see you next time on The Lighthouse Lowdown.